40 Rules of Love The Letter From Kesri to Baghdad February 1243 Bismillahirrahmanirrahim My dear brother Baba Zaman May the peace and blessings of God be upon you. It has been a long time since we have last seen one another, and I hope my letter finds you in good spirits. I have heard so many wonderful things about the Lord you built on the outskirts of Baghdad, teaching the wishes of wisdom and love of God. I am writing this letter in confidentiality to share with you something that has been preoccupying my mind. Allow me to start from the beginning. As you know, the late Sultan al-Adin Kekubad was a remarkable man who excelled in leadership in difficult times. It had been his dream to build a city where poets, artisans, and philosophers could live and work in peace. A dream many called impossible, given the chaos and hostility in the world, especially with the curiosities and Mongols attacking from both sides. We have seen it all, Christians killing Muslims, Christians killing Christians, Muslims killing Christians, Muslims killing Muslims. Warring religions, sects, tribes, even brothers. But Kakabul was a determined leader. He chose the city of Konya, the first place to emerge after the Great Flood, to realize his big dream. Now, in Konya, there lives a scholar you may or may not have heard of. His name is Molana Jalaluddin. But he often goes by the name Rumi. I have had the pleasure of meeting him, and not only that of studying with him, first as his teacher, then upon his father's death as his mentor, and after years as his student. Yes, my friend, I became student of my student. So talented and judicious was he, after a point I had nothing else to teach him, and started to learn from him instead. His father was a brilliant scholar too. But to me has a quality that very few scholars ever have, the ability to dig deep below the husk of religion and pull out from its core. The gem that is universal and eternal. I want you to know that these are not solely my personal thoughts. When Rumi meant great mystic, druggist and perfumist Fariduddin Attar as a young man, Attar said of him, This boy will open a gate in the heart of love and throw a flame into the hearts of all mystic lovers. Likewise, when Ibn Arabi, the distinguished philosopher, writer, and mystic, saw the young Rumi walking behind his father one day, he exclaimed, Glory to be God! An ocean is walking behind a lake. As young as the age of 24, Rumi became a spiritual leader. Today, 13 years later, the residents of Konya look up to him as a role model. And every Friday, people from all over the religion flock to the country, to the city, to listen to his sermons. He has excelled at law, philosophy, theology, astronomy, history, chemistry, and algebra. Already he is said to have 10,000 disciples. His followers hang upon his every word and see him as a great enlightener who will generate a significant positive change in the history of Islam, if not in the history of the world. But to me, Rumi has always been like a son. I promised his late father that I would always keep an eye on him. And now, that I am an old man who is nearing his final days, I want to make sure he is in right company. You see, as remarkable and successful as he, no doubt is, Rumi himself has several times confided in me that he feels inwardly dissatisfied. There is something missing in his life, an emptiness, that neither his family nor his disciples can fill. Once I told him, though he was anything but raw, he wasn't burned either. His cup was full of brim, and yet he needed to have the door to his soul opened so that the waters of love could flow in and out. When he asked me how this could be done, I told him he needed a companion, a friend of the path, and reminded him that Quran says, Believers are each other's mirrors. Had this subject not come up again, I might have forgotten about it completely, but on the day I left Konya, Rumi came to me to ask my opinion on a recurrent dream that he had been bothering. 
He told me that in his dream he was searching for someone in a big bustling city in a land far away. Words in Arabic, delightful sunsets, mulberry trees and silkworms waiting patiently in secretive cocoons for the woman to arrive. Then he saw himself in a courtyard of his house sitting by the well with a lantern in his hand weeping. At the outset I had no idea what the fragments in his dreams indicated. Nothing seemed familiar, but then one day, after I received a silk after I received a silk scarf as a gift, the answer came to me, and the riddle was solved. I remembered how you were fond of silk and silk worms. I recalled the wonderful things I have heard about your tarika, and it dawned upon me that the place Rumi saw in his dreams was none other than your Darvesh Lodge. In short, my brother, I can't help wondering whether Rumi's companion lives under your roof. That's the reason I write this letter. I don't know if there is such person in your lot, but if there is, I leave it in your hands to inform him about the destiny that awaits him. If you and I can play even a minute role in helping two rivers meet and flow into an ocean of divine love as one single water course, if we can help two good friends of God to meet. I will count myself blessed. There is, however, one thing you need to take into consideration. Rumi might be an influential man, adored and respected by many, but that doesn't mean he does not have critiques. He does. Furthermore, such a flowing together might generate discontent and opposition and cause rivalries beyond our comprehension. His fondness of his companion might also cause problems in his family and inner circle. The person who is openly loved by someone who is admired by so many people is bound to draw the envy, if not hated, of others. All of this might put the companion of Rumi in unpredictable danger. In other words, my brother, the person you sent to Konya, might never make it back. Therefore, before reaching a decision as to how to reveal this letter to Rumi's companion, I ask you to give the matter a considerable thought. I'm sorry to put you in a difficult situation, but as we both know, God never burdens us with more than we can bear. I look forward to your answer and trust that whatever the outcome, you will take the right steps in the right direction. May the light of faith never cease to shine upon you and your the wishes. Master Sayyid Burhanuddin